This product training is an Axion Water Technologies production with all rights reserved. This material may not be used or reproduced without the prior written consent from Axion. This video will be discussing the topic of reverse osmosis and explaining how it plays a vital role in the world today, as well as how it works, where it can be utilized, and how typical commercial reverse osmosis systems are designed. Since the development of reverse osmosis and ultrafiltration in the late 1950s and early 60s, the scope for their application has been expanding. Initially, reverse osmosis was applied to the desalination of seawater and brackish water, increased demands to conserve water, reduce energy consumption, control pollution, and reclaim useful materials from waste streams have made new applications economically more attractive. In addition, advances in the fields of biotechnology and pharmaceuticals coupled with advances in membrane development are making membranes an important separation step. How does reverse osmosis work? Osmosis is defined as the process of molecules passing through a semi-permeable membrane from a less concentrated solution into a more concentrated solution. An example of osmosis from nature is the roots of plants drawing water from the soil. Reverse osmosis is simply the opposite of that process. Molecules are forced through a semi-permeable membrane to form a less concentrated solution. Essentially, the membrane acts like a type of filter as it has extremely tiny pores that help remove microscopic contaminants from the water you drink by straining them out. In the case of reverse osmosis drinking water systems, the semi-permeable membrane only lets water molecules through while other contaminants are collected and flushed away. In practice, reverse osmosis and nanofiltration are applied as a cross-flow filtration process. For today's training purposes, we will refer to this as a reverse osmosis, or RO, membrane element. Membranes are thin film composite membranes packed in a spiral wound configuration. Spiral wound designs offer many advantages compared to other module designs, such as tubular, plate and frame, and hollow fiber module design for most of the reverse osmosis applications in water treatment. Typically, a spiral wound configuration offers significantly lower replacement costs, simpler plumbing systems, easier maintenance, and greater design freedom than other configurations, making it the industry standard for reverse osmosis and nanofiltration membranes in water treatment. Membrane elements contain from one to more than 30 membrane leaves, depending on the element diameter and element type. Each leaf is made of two membrane sheets glued together back to back with a permeate spacer between them. A semi-automated process produces consistent glue lines of about 1.5 inches or 4 centimeters wide that seal the inner permeate side of the leaf against the outer feed concentrate side. There is a side glue line at the feed end and at the concentrate end of the element and a closing glue line at the outer diameter of the element. The open side of the leaf is connected to and sealed against the perforated central part of the water tube, which collects the permeate from all leaves. The leaves are rolled up with a sheet of feed spacer between each of them, which provides the channel for the feed and concentrate flow. In operation, the feed water enters the face of the element through the feed spacer channels and exits on the opposite end as concentrate. A part of the feed water, typically 10 to 20 percent, permeates through the membrane into the leaves and exits the permeate water tube. When elements are used for high permeate production rates, the pressure drop of the permeate flow inside the leaves reduces the efficiency of the element. Element construction is relevant because it also optimizes the actual active membrane area, the area inside the glue lines, and the thickness of the feed spacer. Element productivity is enhanced by high active area, while a thick feed spacer reduces fouling and increases cleaning success. In membrane systems, the elements are placed in series inside of a pressure vessel. The concentrate of the first element becomes the feed to the second element, and so on. The permeate tubes are connected with inner connectors, also called couplers, and the combined total permeate exits the pressure vessel at one side and sometimes at both sides of the vessel. 
Reverse osmosis and nanofiltration membrane technologies are widely recognized to offer highly effective and economical process options. From small-scale systems through very large-scale desalination, RO and NF can handle most naturally occurring sources of brackish and seawaters. Permeate waters produced satisfy most currently applicable standards for the quality of drinking waters. RO and NF can reduce regeneration costs and waste when used independently, in combination, or with other processes such as ion exchange. They can also produce very high quality water or when paired with thermal distillation processes can improve asset utilization in power generation and water production against demand. Crossflow membrane filtration uses a pressurized feed stream which flows parallel to the membrane surface. A portion of this stream passes through the membrane, leaving behind the rejected particles in the concentrated remainder of the stream. Since there is a continuous flow across the membrane surface, the rejected particles do not accumulate, but instead are swept away by the concentrate stream. Thus, one feed stream is separated into two exit streams, the solution passing through the membrane surface, permeate, and the remaining concentrate stream. There are four general categories of cross-flow membrane filtration, microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, and reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis is among the finest levels of filtration available. The RO membrane generally acts as a barrier to all dissolved salts and inorganic molecules, as well as organic molecules with a molecular weight greater than approximately 100. Water molecules, on the other hand, pass freely through the membrane creating a purified product stream. Rejection of dissolved salts is typically 95% to greater than 99% depending on factors such as membrane type, feed composition, temperature, and system design. To increase the efficiency and life of reverse osmosis and nanofiltration membranes and systems, effective pretreatment of the feed water is required. Selection of the proper pretreatment will maximize efficiency and membrane life by minimizing fouling, scaling, and membrane degradation, and by optimizing product flow, product quality, product recovery, and operating and maintenance costs. This can be achieved by proper feed water testing and analysis that helps to determine the total dissolved solids of the water and will allow an individual to determine the type of water they will be treating. Low salinity tap waters with TDS up to 500 milligrams per liter, medium salinity brackish waters with TDS up to 5,000 milligrams per liter, and high salinity brackish and sea waters with TDS in the range of 5,000 through 35,000 milligrams per liter. Understanding the feed water quality and specifying the equipment required for the pretreatment, post-treatment, and the storage and delivery of the purified water will help extend the life of the membrane system and provide better overall performance. If you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to Axion and speak with one of our design engineers at 1-800-320-4070.